in its purest form. Real cars, on real roads, real fast. It's the Subaru Canadian Rally Championship on TSN. In Alberta's Jasper National Park, you can see the bighorn sheep that give the rally its name. Welcome to Edson, two hours west of Edmonton as it plays host to the annual Bighorn Rally. And it's nice to be back with you, Vic Roder, along with TSN Rally Analyst Paul Chater. Yeah, Vic, we've got a record entry of 33 teams. We'll start today, and that's uh, partly due to free transportation being offered by CP Rail and Hanson's for that 4,000-kilometer haul from Montreal to Edmonton. Tremendously helpful. We have to thank uh, Hanson's and CP for allowing so many Eastern crews to get here. Well, I don't think we would have been able to come without, without that uh, shipping help. Uh, and so, uh, really, it, it, it's made our, made our events and allowed us to get these points and have such a great time. So we welcome all the Eastern teams, and let's get started. First car away, the championship leaders, Patrick Richard, driving the Group N Impreza WRX for Long Subaru Canada. Left. Yeah, Richard and co-driver Ian McCurdy are from Whistler, BC, and they're on this first stage, which is Vision Park, a spectator stage in Edson, and then the rally will head into the uh, fast forestry roads north of the town for a total of 500 kilometers, including 17 high-speed stages. You know, I think this is really a, the future of all motorsports. I think sometimes you do have to take the event to the people, and that's what they've done here with the Canadian Rally Championship. And here's one of Quebec's top rally teams back this season after missing 2001. Sylvain, Vincent, Dominic Sear in an old-style Impreza. Yeah, they're running an open class, which uh, should mean more in power than the Group N cars, but new rules concerning turbo restrictor plates have uh, closed the gap somewhat between the top open class and Group N cars. I go. They were the P4 champions a year ago. Here are John and Clark Painter from Nova Scotia. Yeah, they missed the first two winter events in Quebec, so they've got to score points from now on to defend their championship. Do you think that the teams look at these stages as the place where they have to make up time compared to what they do out in the forest? No, I think this is a good warm-up for them. This is just sort of getting blowing the dust out a little before they get into the fast stuff in the forest. The Americans, Brian Scott, David Watts, they have a very well-prepared Group N Mitsubishi. Yeah, they're running the entire Canadian Championship but haven't been able to score any points yet on the winter rallies. But Brian hopes the Alberta gravel will better suit his driving style. From Gatineau, Quebec, Sylvain and Philippe Erickson finished second in Quebec, but they failed to finish in their home event, Manawaki. Their Evo 4 runs in Group N, and uh, they are contenders to win, as they've proved by winning the first stage. And uh, Erickson has a new sponsor, Motul Motor Oil, as well. It sort of has that European feel when you see all the people standing on both sides of the corners. When the rally entered the forest, well, Subaru's Patrick Richard picked up the pace. He tied Sylvain Erickson on stage two and then won the next three to take over the you lead. Got it, man. You got it, open. Richard's WRX has a brand new engine, a six speed gearbox, <laughs> and new engine management computer. And all the new parts are working perfectly, despite giving the team a fright the night before the start with a mysterious electrical problem. You got it, man. Last year, Sylvain Erickson felt he had a tire advantage over the Subaru team, but now Subaru has switched to Yokohama, and all the top teams are running on the same A035 rally rubber. And Sylvain likes the fast Alberta roads. After five stages, Sylvain had dropped into second place behind the Subaru. But the, yeah, but the first impression is exactly that. I know where you're going with this. You're saying these look almost groomed. <laughs> they, they do. I mean, they're missing a lot of the big chunks and rocks and holes that we see on some other rallies. These are very nicely groomed roads. Brian Scott's Evo 4 closely matched with Ericsson's car, but his time's inconsistent. Yeah, tying Ericsson on stage three, then only managing fourth on the next one. Oh, Janusz. Komarovsky and Ian Morrison are the top Alberta team. This is an Eagle Talon. Giannis tied for fastest time on stage one with Ericsson and was running solidly in the top five. Uh, I hope they'll be able to come to some more of the Eastern rallies later in the season. Giannis would definitely be competitive. But he gets bitten by bad luck here. Stage five and the local ace crashed heavily and that ended his rally. Thankfully, no one was injured. 
missed on one of the uh, one of the corners, which was a fast left-hander. Uh, basically, the car just went a little bit uh, too far, and uh, it got sucked into the into the rut. And after that, it just barrel rolled six times, ended up uh, on its uh, on its side, and uh, there was a fire around the turbocharger. So we got out, put it out, and uh, we were okay. So not uh, it doesn't look like there's much mechanical damage. It's mostly cosmetic. And his co-driver in the next rally will be Red Green, who will just bring lots of duct tape and they'll stick that thing together. Uh, here's a couple that we're not used to seeing a struggle. Vance Sancerre, not as fast as we expect them to be, still sorting their new Subaru. After five stages, the Quebec couple are fourth. Nova Scotia's painters, they were third here a year ago. And he's fifth right now. If there's something like home field advantage, it might be... Andrew Comrie Picard, because he learned to drive on these roads as a teenager. Yeah, but uh, now he's uh, living in Manhattan, and this doesn't look much like Fifth Avenue. Our first look at the leaderboard and the current Canadian Championship leaders are leading here, too, by 16 seconds. Rally racing on TSN is brought to you in part by Super, the beauty of all-wheel drive, and by Yokohama Performance Radio. Now, you've got control. Welcome back to the Bighorn Rally here on TSN, Vic Rutter, along with Paul Chater. And after five stages, the, the teams have stopped for service. The leaders' cars were running trouble-free, a scrape off the mud, put on a new set of Yokohamas, and they're ready to go again. Patrick Richard continued to post the uh, fastest times. There's a new maturity to his driving. Instead of going right to the edge or driving bananas, as he referred to it, uh, as we've seen him do before, uh, Richard's going just fast enough to win. And he's uh, fastest on every stage in this lake, but just by a second or two over Erickson or Brian Scott. His fans might miss the old Pat, but as Team Subaru's lead driver this weekend, he can't risk a foolish crash or an unnecessary problem with the car. And Subaru's lead driver, and he is the driver that Subaru Canada now is hoping to lead them to another championship. The defending champion, Tom McGear, not here. Tom McGear after the North American championship, which uh, requires running a combination of events in Canada and the U.S. <laughs> Six gear. Six gear, so he's got it <laughs> wide open. Wide open, 6,000 RPM in sixth gear translates to somewhere around 195 kilometers an hour on dirt. And just to finish your thought on Tom McGear, he has already won Quebec, of course. He'll run Bay de Chaleur and Charlevoix this season. Now we're seeing a similar new maturity, it seems, from this driver, Sylvain Erickson. Yeah, he and uh, Patrick are, are both slowing down and starting to win rallies rather than just posting the occasional brilliant stage time. And if Erickson seems a bit cautious, he has good reason. Look at this from last year. And believe it or not, <laughs> actually, you see the backup lights come on? He finished the rally. And here's Brian Scott in his Evo 4 Mitsubishi. Now, they don't sell these cars in Canada. And in fact, they don't sell the all-wheel drive Lancer Evos in the States either. But still, uh, there must be about two dozen rally cars which have found their way here from Europe or Japan, and Scott is currently running in third overall. Now, we know from history that many top racers spend their early years in karting, but here is an unusual story. Yeah, you're not kidding. Andrew Comrie Picard was the Canadian champion in radio control model racing. He was actually factory sponsored and competed mm. in big races in Europe and Japan as a teenager. And uh, WRC driver Petter Solberg uh, has the same background. Uh, maybe there's a connection? I can see a little antenna coming out of that car. Sylvain Vincent holds on to fifth place, but this veteran can't be pleased with what he's doing. No, he parted with uh, Le Chute Subaru team uh, to build his own car, and he must be thinking that his driving skill and experience will be able to overcome a lesser machine, but I think he's underestimating the competition. Erickson and Richard may have surpassed him as drivers, and Sylvain will need at least an equal car to be competitive. You know, you, this is a, exactly what people talk about with regards to Formula oh One. If you took Michael Schumacher out of a top car as he's driving now and put him into a lesser car, how would he do? And maybe this is an example of that. 
Yeah, and sometimes it just takes a good driver a little bit longer to get a car up to spec. Uh, the driver and the teams work together to make the car quicker, so uh, it, it, th that's debatable. Coming up to a narrow bridge. We heard the instructions, and that's really just over a couple of planks. Yeah, cattle gate. After seven stages, here's the leaderboard for you. Subarus, first and fifth, and they sandwich. Three, Mitsubishi Evil Force. Looking at the class leaders, it's uh, really a family affair. Brothers uh, John and Clark Painter here, lead production for the top nearly stock category. Husband Gord, wife Kathy Olson from Brooks, Alberta, lead group two for modified two-wheel drive car. Andrew and Rebecca Miller, brother and sister this time from Ontario, lead P3. And continuing the family trend, the father and son team of Yavor and Jesse Postranich lead P2 in their Nissan. While Vancouver's Martin Wilson and Dennis Wind lead P1 for Subaru. Now, so far, they're not related, but Bighorn is a long rally. For the second straight year, the Bighorn Rally visits the town of Rob, Alberta, southwest of Edson. And the cars get a little service. They'll do two special stages through the town. It's a nice time, actually. Yeah, grab some lunch, have a break, and for the fans and the teams to meet each other, and no problems yet for Subaru's two-car team, but the crew is still taking every precaution. And for Brian Scott, the rally is going fine. He's just not winning. I think we're going to push pretty hard. I mean, we're going to go at a pretty hard pace. I think we have to, or we'll be caught from behind. So, uh, I mean, we're going to see where the times fall, but yeah, we're going to go hard. I mean, it's going to be pretty much maximum attack, so. So it's time to get off the swings, guys. Find yourself a good spot to watch because the rally cars are about to rip up the streets of Rob Elbert. And it's an unusual mix of gravel and tarmac with some steep climbs and descents. Oh, some problems here for our leader. Pat Richard wins the stage, but the mistakes cost him time. Yeah, it was just getting a little behind in the steering, getting a bit too sideways in some corners. T right, 100. Missed the shift there. T right? T right. And he missed the shift. You heard him mention. 100. You know, I wonder, because you said earlier, you know, how he'd become more mature and he was just doing enough to win. Uh, I wonder sometimes if you can take too much of the edge off yourself. You can. Um, Quite often, race drivers, rally drivers say they make their biggest mistakes when they start to back off and conserve the car or try to conserve a victory. Sylvain Erickson ties Richard now to the second, so he's picked it up. Yeah, you can see this road's getting a little chewed up. There's a big puddle over here on the right and then straight into a hairpin right-hand turn. starting to see a little bit of snow as well as they climb in elevation. Interesting, you go from the drier bits down below up now into maybe wet, mucky kind of conditions. Yeah, left air pin coming up. Nicely done. He's got his foot in it the whole way around. And you really do notice a difference between the the more veteran, the more experienced rally drivers and the newcomers. Here's Andrew Comrie Picard makes it a three-way tie for victory on stage number eight. And interesting as well, they go from the gravel to some asphalt. They have to adjust their driving style as we take a look at John Painter, who posts the fourth fastest time, just one second behind the trio who finished in first place. And now we mentioned this hairpin where the road changes from gravel to asphalt, and you can see some ah. just don't know what to do. And 
That's a Chevette, believe it or not. Now, we're going to see a lot of creative ways to take care of mid turns. That's called terminal understeer. <laughs> Bad. I like that one. Not bad at all. Another Here. Chevette. Really? Yeah, oh, this is called lock them up and go straight up. Oh, and the <laughs> pressure on the tie rod. Look at this little Mazda. Got it, got it, got it. Yep, got it this time. Had the right idea, got the pendulum started, just didn't carry it through. <laughs> just finished a little early. Go, go, go. Now out in the forests, well, it was Patrick Richard who continues to win every stage. This is where he is best. Three drivers can match his pace, but only occasionally. And uh, once again this season, Richard will be North America's busiest rally driver, contesting the full nine event Canadian series for Subaru. Britain's Peugeot 206 challenge, and uh, where his schedule will allow it, selected US events with uh, various private teams. And with defending champion Tom McGear running a limited season, Team Subaru has shifted its focus to making Pat Richard the uh, 2002 Canadian champion, as we mentioned. And uh, if they're successful, it'll be the first overall title to be won in a Group N car. Now we can see as they're getting down lower altitudes here, the roads are getting very dusty. Uh, it's fine if you're running first on the road, but anybody behind, it's uh, it's just as bad as running in fog. Higher altitudes here, we can see the roads are still rather damp. They're fast, and visibility's not a problem. Sylvan Erickson, for example, look at the snow as they get up, and look at how the road changes conditions. And Sylvan has two national rally victories to his credit. Yeah, he's the only currently active Quebec rally driver who's actually won an event. As you mentioned, the road surface. Look at there's that dust you were speaking of. Wet and muddy up top, dust becoming a factor, and it gets worse, of course, the farther back you are in the field. Yeah, and beyond the visibility problems, it also has a way of migrating into the car and making the environment in the cockpit not pleasant either. Brian Scott, David Watts. Well, they were heading for a podium finish a year ago, but they missed a corner on the second to last stage. They crashed, they got no points. Yeah, the Michigan pair have not fared well so far this season with both of their winter rallies ending stuck in snowbanks. They really need to score well here today. And seeing a little bit of snow, but thankfully none of it is on the roads. Now, Andrew Comrie Picard is challenging Scott for third place. After a slow start on the first leg, which had him in sixth place overall, Comrie Picard has cranked up the boost, engaged his turbo anti-lag system, and put his right foot down pretty hard, posting regular top three times and moving up into fourth place just three seconds behind Brian Scott. And on stage 15, he would take over third place. His Evo 4 runs in open class, which gives him perhaps 30 horsepower more than Ericsson or Scott Ooh, in Group N. Sylvain Vincent, his times are always in the top six, but he's still losing ground to the battle going on ahead of him. And that's just got to be flat out frustrating. You're doing the best you can, you know your car just can't compete. Yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's going to be for the rest of the season for him trying to get this car up to speed. And he's eating a lot of dust in the process. So as we check the leaderboard after 15 stages, Richard leads by 111 over Ericsson. Comrie Picard has passed Brian Scott by 18 seconds for third. Just two stages to go in this 2002 Bighorn Rally, and Brian Scott starts Denison in. And just 18 seconds off the podium, Scott pours it on and wins the stage outright, uh -huh. cutting the margin to third place to just 13 seconds. Great run into the forest, out of the forest. But really, it's Patrick Richard's rally to lose. He has won or tied all but two special stages. And the mysterious electrical problem that was causing the engine to cut out yesterday has vanished. And uh, crew chief Stuart Ho stayed up all night trying to find the problem. Well, he must have fixed it, but when a mechanic doesn't know how a problem was repaired, he doesn't really trust it. So their fingers have been crossed all day at Team Super. Andrew Comrie Picard, Dave Schindel are having their best rally ever. That notebook, of course, is called Schindel's List. <laughs> and they've moved just ahead of Brian Scott. And if they can hang on through two more stages, it'll be their second straight podium finish. 
Sylvan Erickson, he's going to finish a solid second. And Paul, more importantly, a full minute clear of everything behind him. And there's another rally next weekend in Calgary. Unlike last year, Erickson will just have minor maintenance to do to get his Evo 4 ready for part two of this Western Swing. Now, John Painter's objective when he got here was to win production four, and he will do it very comfortably. By more than three minutes over Joel Levac. So a great rally for Team Subaru. Now we talked earlier about the trials and tribulations of Sylvain Vincent. He just didn't have a, a car that he could make competitive. And then, well, his rally comes to a miserable finish. Yeah, at the second to last roll. You watch, you pull up, they get their time card. And he can't restart. Boy, that's frustrating. A failed fuel pump, and he's out. No points. Patrick Richard at the final checkpoint. Yeah, second win in the two rallies, so uh, I'm pretty ecstatic. Is it for the championship? Oh, uh, yeah, this really helped us out. Uh, so I uh, couldn't ask for anything more. And second place, Sylvan Erickson wouldn't have been here except for the help of CP Rail and Hansons to get his car to the west. So it is Patrick Richard who wins Subaru's first and fifth. John Painter wins before. The husband and wife team, the Olsons, win group two. And Andrew Miller wins P3. We saw them earlier, the father and son team, Yavor Kostranich, P2. And Martin Wilson wins production one. So with two straight wins, Patrick Richard is comfortably in front through three events by 20 points. Andrew Comrie Picard just three points out of third. Rally Racing on TSN has been brought to you in part by Subaru, the beauty of all-wheel drive. And by Yokohama Performance Radials. Yokohama, now you've got control. So until we talk with you again next time, on behalf of Paul and our entire crew, thanks for joining us. This is the Canadian Rally Championship on TSN, Canada's sports leader.